Attention, all true believers. Marvel Comics is on the air. Out of the pages of the world's greatest comic magazine come the adventures of the Fantastic Four. This week's epic, the first tale in this new radio series, is from the original book of Marvel called The Fantastic Four Meet the Mole Man, the beginnings of which we shall witness in just half a moment. It's mid-afternoon in New York City. Through the din of midday traffic is heard a strange explosion. A symbol takes shape in the city's sky, and a legend is born. Hey, look up there. What does that mean? Could it be an invasion? And high above the excitement and hubbub, one man holds the still smoldering flare gun. One individual who is somehow more than just a man. He is the leader of the Fantastic Four. This is the first time that I've had to use the signal, and I pray it will be the last. In another part of Manhattan, Susan Storm is having tea with a society friend when she hears... Sue, look out there. What? That symbol in the sky. What do you suppose it means? Oh, I'm sorry, Jackie. I have to go now. What? But we haven't even started our lunch. So it's happened at last. I must be true to my vow. There's no turning back. She's gone. But how? It's time for the world to meet the invisible girl. And at the same time, in a men's clothing store downtown... I'm sorry, sir, but we don't carry anything large enough to fit a man of your stature. Bah! Everywhere I go, it's the same story. I'm in a world too small. Say, look in the sky. That bright red symbol with the number four inside? Huh? What can it mean? Let me see that. The time has come. Out of my way! What? Why do they build doorways so narrow? Holy smokes, a master. Officer, do something. Hard. Hard or I shoot. I warned you. People are so friendly. Did you see that? He hit that manhole cover under the ground with his bare hands. Take my special underground express route. There are so many tunnels under the city, and this is faster than subways. Quieter, too. Ah, this ought to be far enough. There's no opening above. I'll just have to make an opening. A master came up out of the ground. It don't look human. We're being invaded by Martians. Call out the army. Oh, we're being invaded. Invaded? Well, before we make such a decision, let's observe another scene at Swanson's Garage. <laughs> we got her purring like a lamb, Johnny Boy. Good, that's the way it should be. There's only one thing I like better than working on cars. What's that? Hey, look. What's that in the sky? That's my cue. Flame on. Hey, Johnny, what's happening to you? Remember me saying there's only one thing I like better than working on cars? Well, this is it. The figure which just seconds before had been Johnny Storm is now the human torch, flying through the skies like a flaming meteor. Red dog base to squadron leader, Scandal Ellard. You are authorized to locate and bring down unidentifiable flaming object now flying over Manhattan. And within a few minutes, Johnny Storm is in a dogfight for his life. I can't keep this up much longer. My flame's gonna run out. Oh no, I'm falling. I'm not gonna make it. And then, just as the flying boy's flame begins to flicker out altogether, two impossibly long arms stretch out and... Gotcha. The now flameless human torch is plucked from the air by the strange man who fired the flare which caused all the commotion. <sighs> Thanks, Reed. Oh, you're safe now, lad. Who is this man? In fact, who are all four of these astonishing humans? How did they become what they are? What mystic quirk of fate brought them all together to form the Fantastic Four? Well, you all came when I summoned you. Good. There's a task that awaits us. An awesome task. There's time for us to learn of the task awaiting these four, but first, let us uncover the origins of this colorful quartet. That requires a bit of Marvel magic as we travel back to a time and place before there was a Fantastic Four 
back to the office of Dr. Reed Richards in the Federal Space Exploration Complex, where Dr. Richards is briefing his team. So, as you can see, we have a clear time window at 9.40 tonight, and then not again for three years. If we're to be the first in space, we must leave tonight. What? You're not going tonight with me as pilot. You know we haven't done enough research into the effects of cosmic rays. Out in space, they could kill us all. Ben, we've got to take that chance. Unless you want the Reds to beat us to it. I I never thought you were a coward. Coward? Get that shit. I'll fly her no matter what happens. And so, led by a determined Dr. Reed Richards, the group speeds to the spaceport. Susan, Ben and I know what we're doing. But you and, and Johnny, you two don't... Don't say it, Reed. I've been working on this for too long. Where you go, I go. And I'm tagged along with Sis, so it's settled. No time to wait for clearance. Conditions are right, right now. I think this is a stupid thing you're doing, but I ain't no coward. And before the guards can stop them, the mighty ship which Reed Richards has spent years constructing is streaking for the heavens, climbing into space. Hey, this hurts. Feels like I have a ton of concrete on my chest. Caused by our fantastic rate of acceleration, Johnny. Right, but the ship is acting like a perfect baby. Yeah, but we still don't know about those cosmic rays. Higher and higher, like a silver bullet, the sleek spacecraft soars. Hear that? The rays are penetrating the ship. I warned you. My head is pounding like it's going to burst. Rays my hands. I, I can't steer. Ben was right. We should have waited. We should have had heavier shielding. But sis, I feel like I'm burning up. My body is so hot. I can't move. I tried to warn you. At that moment, the powerful rocket's autopilot takes over and the sleek ship returns to Earth in a rugged but non-fatal landing. Leaving our quartet of cosmically charged champions deep in the jungles of South America. Oh. Reed, after all your work, we failed. I'm just grateful we're all alive. But we failed. Bah, what'd you expect? And we still don't know what effects the cosmic rays will have on us. Oh, Reed, I feel strange. Susan! Look at Susan! Sis, what's happening? You're... you're, you're fading away. Oh, no! What's happening to me? Reed, Ben, Johnny. Somehow the cosmic rays have altered your DNA, making you invisible. Sis, I can't see you at all anymore. Tried to tell you to wait. How long will it last, Reed? That's got to be the question of the century. How long will it last? There's no way of knowing. What if she never gets visible again? Easy, Johnny. Susan, concentrate. Think about your physical form. Try to imagine yourself visible. I'll try, darling. Look, it's working. I can feel it. Oh, Susan, it is working. Oh, it's still so strange. Oh. Boy, you were lucky. We might never have seen you again. Richard, you were crazy for proceeding with this experiment. How do you know she won't turn invisible again? Oh, Ben, I'm all right now. Oh, sure, you're okay now, but what about a minute ago? And what's going to happen to the rest of us, wise guys? Ben, I'm sick and tired of your insults and complaining. I didn't purposely... And I'm sick and tired of you, period, bub. In fact, I'm going to paste you one right in that slug face of yours. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Ben, wait, Ben. What's happening to him, sis? I don't know, Johnny. His skin is cracking. He's turning into orange rock. Wait, Ben. Don't try to talk yourself out of this one, Doc. I'm going to nail you. Oh, he pulled that tree right out of the ground. He's turning into some kind of a thing. Oh, Reed, darling, do something. Reed, darling. Oh, oh no, you know, you know. You've had this coming for a long time. Oh, Reed, not you, too. What's going on, sis? What's happening to Reed's arms and legs? I don't know, darling. Do you like rubber bands or something? They stretch like elastic, even his neck. What am I, what am I, what am I doing? doing? What's happened to me? What's happened to all of us? You've turned into monsters, all of you. It's those terrible cosmic rays. Look at me. They've gotten me, too. My body's beginning to play. And lighter than air, I, I can fly. Oh, wow, I can really fly. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. It's okay, sis. I just feel a little warm, that's all. 
Minutes later, Johnny Storm's flame has subsided, and he returns to the others. Together, they watch a small brush fire which started burn itself out. And then they stand silently, each absorbed in his own startling thoughts. We change, all of us. We're We're more than just human. Listen to me. You too, Ben. Together we have more power than any humans have ever had. Why, we... You don't have to make no speech, Big Shot. We understand. We gotta use our power to help mankind, right? Right, Ben. I'm gonna call myself the Human Torch. I'm with you all the way. Count me in, too. I'm the Invisible Girl. I guess I ain't Ben Grimm no more. I'll be what Susan called me. The Thing. And I'll call myself Mr. Fantastic. And so was born the Fantastic Four. From that moment on, the world could never be the same. And now, knowing some pertinent history, let's return to the relative present. This is the first time Dr. Reed Richards has brought the fabulous foursome together since that fateful flight, and the task awaiting them is truly awesome. I brought you here to see some photographs I just received from Washington. Pictures. What are they, (laughs) pinups? This one's an aerial shot of what used to be a nuclear power plant in the Soviet Union. What made that big hole in the earth? The same thing that made this hole in a power plant in Southern California. And this one in Australia? It's happening all over the world. Wait, according to the steady pulses on this seismograph, another one is about to go. And halfway around the world in French Africa. What is that sound, Andre? It feels like the ground is shaking under my feet. And that sound, it sounds like annoying. An earthquake in the sand. How is that possible? The earth is going mad. Look, the entire installation is heading in. But the worst is yet to come for these unfortunate French legionnaires. Not only did their nuclear generator sink into the undulating earth, but... What is his name of... Oh, it is some kind of giant blood beast! Artillery! Bring the artillery! But of what use is artillery against an enormous creature whose hide is tough enough to dig through countless tons of rock-hard earth? There is no artillery to stop a monster that can crush a modern tank with but one claw. But just as it seems, there is nothing can stop this merciless menace. Enough! Return to the core of a missionary space! And the Goliath stops in his tracks. For even a monster such as this feeds a master. A master known as the Mole Man. Back at the strategy meeting amongst the Fantastic Four... You see, it's happened again. But how? That's why I brought you together. Our mission is to find out. By studying the previous cave-ins, I've pinpointed a location that is exactly in the middle of all of them. This is where we've got to go to find the answer. What's the name of this place? Monster Island. Monster Island? That's just a fairy tale. There's no such real place called Monster Island. But hours later, in their private jet, the four see a strange mountain rising from the sea like an unearthly, grotesque face. There it is. Horrible looking. Wow! Monster Island! Little dreaming of the adventure that awaits them, the Fantastic Four land and begin the long climb to the top of the forbidding peak. Wait, I hear something. It's coming from below. Look down there. Six eyes, coming out of that hole. A living, three-headed nightmare hurls forth from the bowels of Monster Island. Quick, turn invisible, Sue. Seeing one of his intended victims vanish before his eyes, the monster halts in bewilderment. Just enough time for me to make a hoop out of my resilient arm. And, like a cowpoke roping a wild stallion, Mr. Fantastic lassoes one of the monstrosity's three heads and slings it far out to sea. I read about a giant three-headed creature that guards this place, but I never believed it. But before Mr. Fantastic and Johnny can catch their breaths... Look out! Cave in! The earth opens up and literally swallows Reed and Johnny. Hang on there, boy! Down, down, down they plummet, lost in the darkness until finally at the bottom of the pit. It's pitch black in here. What sort of place can this be? Say, Reed, over here. What is it? Feels like a door in the wall. 
It's moving. Oh, that light. Why do we try? I can't see. It's so powerful that I'm flagging out. It could be minutes or hours later when the two regain consciousness only to find themselves garbed in strange, heavy suits that protect them from the blinding, unearthly glow. Oh, my God. That light actually overpowered us. How do we get into these clothes? It is about time you came around. Who are you? I, I can't see. Where are we? One thing at a time. The reason for your blindness is the glare from this valley of diamonds. Brighter than the sun. And as for me, I am the Moon Man. While Reed and Johnny are dazzled by the Valley of Diamonds, more action awaits Ben and Sue on the surface. I've got to find Reed and Johnny. Wait, what's that sound? Other ears and eyes sense the approaching menace. Look up behind you, Sue. Oh, oh, yeah, look. The second gigantic guardian of Monster Isle is powerful beyond belief. But he is fighting a foe whose very body has been supercharged with cosmic energy. A foe that cannot be stopped. He's done it, Ben. You beat him. What'd you expect? I am the thing, ain't I? Oh, you saved my life. Never mind that. Let's go find your brother and that skinny boyfriend of yours. Oh, Ben, if you could only stop hating Reed for what happened to you. And what of Reed Richards and Johnny? Using that Marvel magic again, let's descend to the depths of Monster Isle, where we find them confronted by the strange Mole Man. So you have never heard of me before. Well, soon the world will know my name, for soon the Mole Man will control the power of the Earth. How did you get here? It all started long ago. The people of the surface world mocked me. Me? Go out with you? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I know you're qualified, but I can't hurry. You. Uh, you did scare away all my business. Really? Is that a mask you're wearing? Finally. I could endure it no longer. I resolved to find a place of my own. The legendary world at the center of the earth. The world where I could be king. And then, when I had almost abandoned the hope, this cavern, this cavern, this cavern, this cavern, this cavern, this cavern, I saw where it led to the land of my dreams. I found, I found, I found, I found, I found. The sudden shock of my outcry in that new silent cavern caused a violent avalanche. When it was over, I had somehow survived, but I fell into the Valley of Diamonds and was permanently blind. That was the last of my misfortunes. My luck has changed as I mastered the creatures down here. May them do my bidding. With their talents, I carved an empire out of the Earth's core. <laughs> I conquered everything around me. I developed the ability to deal with the dark and the blindness. Yes, take this paw. Try to hit me with it. What do you mean? Try it. Take a swing at me. <laughs> Again. See? I have radar like a bat. I am able to evade whatever danger approaches me and return the attack in time. Reed, you okay? He's not hurt. But see how easily I defeat anyone who dares defy me. But now, at my signal, those creatures from the bowels of the earth shall destroy you, my witless intruders. We'll see about that thing, sis. Johnny. It is too late. The die is cast. Look out, Ben. Behind you. Hearing the Mole Man's signal, his largest and most deadly underground creature thunderously lifts itself into the room, its brainless rage directed at the ill-fated four. Flame on. Help is on the way. Things are going to get kind of warm around here. Back and forth like a flaming hornet, the human torch buzzes the gigantic creature who tries to grasp the frantically flying youth. The Mole Man is getting away. Not if I can help it. And I can. You haven't won yet. You can beat my entire menagerie of monsters. And then they 
come. Like pieces from an insane nightmare. Warring, running, snarling. The Mole Man's entire army of underground gargoyles. But the unbelievable power of the torch flying between his fantastic allies and the pursuing hordes blazes a swath of melting earth. This will cause a landslide, stealing those creatures from us. You did it! And we're free, too! We better get out of here. This whole place is going to erupt. And moments later... What happened to the Mole Man? I left him there. He'll never bother anyone. Look! He's destroyed the entire island! It's the best way. There was no place for him in our world. I just hope we've seen the last of him. Whether we've seen the last of the Mole Man or not, one thing is certain. We'll see much more of the world's most incredible quartet in the weeks to come as we pursue the further adventures of the Fantastic Four. Be listening again on Monday when the Fantastic Four face the marvelous menace of the Miracle Man. 